Hey there, this is Kavil and in this episode of Electronic Medis, we are going to talk about not batteries but battery eliminators, power supplies. So you know, um, these batteries can work very good but uh, in cases when I need 5 volts, I need, uh, I need to use a regulator or if I need 10 volts or even higher than that, then these batteries are waste really. And these batteries can supply about 9 volts constant but not for too long because after a few days they will die out and the voltage will drop uh, tremendously. Well, yeah. So, uh, and at the same time, if I need a higher current supply, so for example, this 9 volt battery is a cheap one, but uh, this can supply a maximum of uh, 500 milliamps to uh, 1 amp. Uh, but if I need a more power current power supply, then I need a bigger battery, right? So, then even the 12 volt batteries, bigger batteries cost about 500 to 600 rupees, uh, 650, 700 rupees, sorry. Instead of spending 600 for the 12 volts battery of high current, I can spend that 600 or a lot less money to make a power supply or a battery eliminator which can supply the same voltage at the same current but for a longer period of time. You need not charge them like the batteries. Okay, so this works around a simple IC of LM317. This is the LM317 regulator. So it's not a SMPS type, it's a transformer power supply. We use a transformer to drop down the 220 volts of the main supply to a lesser voltage of AC supply by the way yeah so we'll drop the 220 volts AC into a some say for example 12 volts AC and this 12 volts AC will be connected to DC using a rectifier or bridge rectifier by the way yeah we'll use so we'll use a bridge rectifier to convert that AC into DC and we'll use a capacitor filter simple capacitor filters and we can directly use the 12 volts DC or we can use a regulator as I said uh, LM317 or a constant regulator 7805 706 series. Uh, by the way, this LM317 is a variable uh, regulator. So, you can use the regulator and use the output. So, today we are going to talk about variable power supplies and also the constant power supplies. Uh, we'll talk about half amp power supply, uh, which I already have. Uh, I even have a 2 amp power supply and a 3 amp power supply. So, we are going to talk about 3 of them. And half amp power supply is a variable one, and other two are, two are the uh, constant power supplies. So, let's see how they are made. So, every power supply needs a transformer. So for this, we we'll usually use a step down transformer. Say for example, I need a power supply of uh, 0 to some 30 volts or approximately 24 volts. So I'll take a 12 0 12 transformer. It's a center tram transformer. So it will, its primary will be 230 volts. So it will be a 230 by 12 volts transformer. So the power rating can be a, say for example, it's a 1 amp transformer. So the output will connect to bridge rectifier. The other two terminals of the bridge rectifier are connected to a capacitor. So here the output voltage will be approximately 24, 24 volts to 30 volts because of the RMS voltage will be 30 volts. So uh, ideally it should be 24 volts. So here the output of this capacitor is connected to a regulator. Say for example a LM317 variable regulator. So here I will connect the input to the V in and the output is taken from the V out and the adjustment pin is connected to a potentiometer like this. So this potentiometer uh, value will govern the output voltage and the feedback resistor is connected here. So the port can be approximately 5 kilo ohm to 10 kilo ohm and the feedback resistor can be approximately 220 ohms to 330 ohms. So take care that this feedback resistor uh, power rating should be approximately 1 watt so that it doesn't burn out easily. You can connect a capacitor again here just to uh, act as a filter and the output can be connected to the load directly. So for if you consider a LM317 IC. If you consider IC like this, then the leftmost pin, this one, will be the adjustment pin. The rightmost pin will be the input. And the center pin, this one, will be the V out. So now I'll show you some of my power supplies which I already made uh, and I've been using for a very long time. So I'll show you though. So this is my power, first power supply. It's a half amp power supply, and I have been using this power supply for past uh, more than three years. And uh, it gets the AC supply from this plug. It's connected here on the back, 
and if you see the inside here the AC supply comes to this transformer it's a 12 0 12 half amp transformer and it comes to this through this push to on push to off switch so the output of this transformer is connected to a bridge rectifier it's here actually under this tape uh, you cannot see it it's covered so it's the bridge there's a bridge rectifier there using four uh, uh, one and four double zero seven diodes and from there it's connected to this capacitor it acts as a filter it's a 470 microfarad capacitor 50 volts and from there it's connected to lm317 ic here it's a lm317 voltage regulator here this one it is connected to the screw to the heat sink it's a metal plate uh, it is a painted metal plate so that will match with the body and to control adjust the voltage of the uh, voltage output of this lm317 there's a port connected this is a port here it's a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer here you can vary the output voltage using this potentiometer knob and the output of this uh, regulator is connected to this capacitor to the terminals so my next power supply is this big box it's a big power supply it's a 2 amp power supply uh, like the before one it was a half amp it's a 2 amp power supply so uh, it has two terminals uh, which are the output terminals and a switch to control the on and off so the, here it's a this one is an led which is an indicator that the power is switched on and off these holes mean nothing so let's see inside so as you can see there's a transformer here it has this transformer has one primary and two secondary coils so this is not a center trap transformer it has two secondary coils a different secondary coil so as you can see this green one is the one secondary coil and the yellow one here this is the second secondary coil the red one is a primary coil so i gave the ac supply through this switch through a fuse here just for protection it's a one amp fuse to the transformer and in the output of this transformer the green wires and the yellow wires are connected to two bijected fires here as you can see the yeah here there are two bijected fires and connected to a capacitor the capacitor is the output terminal connected to the output terminals so from these two bridge rectifiers uh, wires are connected to these screws here i'll show you here at the back so here so if i connect this red one here only here and then i'll get the output positive 12 volts if i connect this green one here i'll get positive 6 volts but at current 1 amp only but if I connect these two terminals in parallel and these two terminals in, in parallel, then I'll get the output as 2 amps. If I connect red one, 12 volts 2 amps. If I connect the green one, 6 volts 2 amps. If I disconnect these two wires and connect these two to this one pa uh, in parallel, uh, like these two, these three in series, these three are connected and these three are connected, then I'll get an output of about uh, 15 volts at 2 amps. But if I connect these two in series like i'll connect the positive to the negative and i'll connect this negative to here and this positive to here then i'll get an output of about 30 volts at one amp current so this is a kind of a constant but still variable power supply and uh, i made this about four or five months back for a project and i'm still using it and it's working great here so as you can see uh I have connected regulators here. These are two uh, 12 volt regulators, 7812, and these here they are two 6 volt regulators, 7806. I have used the cover of this you know, old 9 volts batteries, which is a metal cover, and used them as a heatsink so that I need not purchase a new heatsink. And it's connected to an external plate also here, just for heat dissipation. So that was about this big power supply. So my final power supply is this one. This it, this one looks very small, but believe me, it can give a current of about three amps, and it's a center trap transformer 12012. So as you can see, there are no terminals here. I didn't connect to any terminals. I directly connected a heavy duty wire here. So uh, if we use these two wires, then we'll get an output of about 12 volts at three amps current. It's a DC here, and these two wires they are 12 volts three amps at AC supply. Okay. So I have connected a LED sub LED here, LED indicator. There's no switch connected, so I can directly switch it on and switch it off at the uh, socket. And so let's see inside. Uh, as you can see, this is a 12012 3 amps transformer. And I used a fuse here just for protection. It's a one, uh, two amp fuse. And from the AC supply connected to the fuse to the transformer, and the output of the transformer is three wires. That's the center trap transformer. This is red one, black one, and red one. So I connected one red and one black to a bridge rectifier inside. I don't think you can see that. And there is a capacitor, as you can see, there is a capacitor there, which acts as a filter. 
and the output is given to this these two wires these two yellow wires so the bottom one is the positive terminal and the top one is the negative terminal so i connected uh, other red wire and the black wire to this wire so i can get an ac supply so that if i need ac supply i can use from this directly so i just made this yesterday for my project and uh, until now it's working great i haven't uh, actually tested it for long terms but yeah for uh, high current supply yeah it, it's working great uh, there's no hitting problem and in this one more thing is that i didn't use a uh, diode bridge i used a uh, bridge fire module that's a 6m module i don't think you can see that yeah mm, yeah you cannot see that so i connected the bridge fire module so that i can get a higher current so the advantage of using this bridge fire apart from the diode version is that uh, these bridge fires can uh, operate uh, satisfied uh, operate well at higher currents but if you consider diode reject fires i don't think they can supply enough current at the output and they even have the problem of heating up so i connected the reject fire inside to this metal plate so so that it lacked as a heat sink from inside and so that was my episode about power supplies and yeah uh, during uh, construction of these power supplies take care to provide a proper heat sink to the lmp1 circuit radiator because uh, usually it gets very heated up if you use a higher current transformer and not just that but if you are using a feedback uh, resistor of uh, say about 220 ohms to 330 ohms then better take a high voltage resistor so that uh, it doesn't burn out easily and even if it burns out it's a problem that the potentiometer may burn out so if you have a consistent problem of potentiometer burnout then make sure the feedback resistor is connected properly and there are no loose connections and if it still if the problem still continues then better use a 1 watt potentiometer and head, uh, do not overload your power supply because usually you know uh, if you overload the power supply the transformer heats up uh, and if the transformer heats up there is a problem that the coil may burn out and you may have to buy a new transformer so better don't overload and take the readings of the current while you are doing your project so that you don't overload your project you overload your power supply so that was for my today's video and thank you for viewing it and please subscribe to like my videos. Thank you.